Like, honestly, I, yeah, you know, like, especially when the kids are gone and I know that I have a little bit more time mm-hmm. historically and in, in some ways I have, and like this week there, there is no extra time. And yeah. I am starting a new job. I'm playing like a bunch of not just like catch up, but transitioning into the fall and doing things for the market that I own mm-hmm. and there's a lot of work happening. And so therefore I think I'm, I'm in a kitchen rut, but it's almost like, um, it's like self-inflicted. It's like, it's, a, it's like out of necessity. I'm just yeah. all trying to stay afloat. This right. Week. And like kitchen rut also, because being in the kitchen right now, it's not something that's going to bring you pleasure. No, it sounds like work right now. Right. And so like in order to maintain the kitchen being a place of pleasure we also have to know when to leave it alone we gotta like take a beat from it right like i really love the way that adrian marie brown describes moderation mm-hmm. it's specifically in the context of pleasure like she talks about how moderation is a necessity for pleasure to exist because if we have too much pleasure then we start to numb out to it right right so like if the things that bring us pleasure also ebb and flow because we're humans, we have to let that moderation be okay. Yeah. And I think that I am glad that you said that because, you know, like there, there's an element of disappointment, right? Like, totally. Because I, it's like, I know that that brings me joy typically. Yeah. Right. And I, and I, and I know that the kids are gone. And so I know that when, when the kids are not home that I, that I do like to make the risotto or mm-hmm. like, you know, maybe make something that requires a little bit more time or something that's like a lot more spicy though than what I can feed them. And it is a pizza rolls and champagne kind of a week around here. And like, I'm just gonna, while I miss cooking, like I miss being in, in the kitchen, I, I'm not like floundering and being like, I'm never going to cook again. Right. You know? Right. Um, and so, so to circle back to uh, wonderful things that I've eaten, <clears throat> pizza rolls pizza rolls when's the last time you had a pizza roll because i asked anaya this and he was like uh i don't know i mean within the last month or two and i was like really and he's like oh yeah like costco i mean i mean i can get through a costco size bag of pizza rolls in a couple and i was like oh my god Um, i'm like i think that it's been like years and years since I've had a pizza roll. <laughs> I'm, see, like, pizza rolls are not the thing that, and like, me either. it never, like, I don't have a sense of nostalgia about them. I mean, I do, and I have a sense of nostalgia with, like, far, far more things than, than yeah, a pizza roll. But, um, I feel like Liam has bought pizza rolls as, like, a stoner snack. Yeah in recent history and to be like so clear uh anaya is like absolutely a square when it comes to like marijuana and does not (laughs) does not consume marijuana at all which makes me love him and his affinity for pizza rolls even more yeah we were in target post brunch and he was like "Ooh, pizza rolls and i was like (laughs) whatever you need whatever you need and so uh pizza rolls and champagne was fun uh what else have i eaten this week uh I ate pizza in bed for dinner <laughs> last night. Excellent. <laughs> um, and then I came over today and uh, noticed that one of the tomato plants out front was. Uh, the leaning tower of tomatoes. It was like having a shamble mountain moment. And yeah. so I, I, I did some, some things to it and to save it and while I was out there I harvested uh the ones that were ready to be harvested and then I came inside and I washed them and I put some salt and pepper and olive oil and vinegar on them and I ate them with pretzel chips and to be so honest that's uh that's probably the best thing that I've eaten in six days I grew those who grew those I grew those I mean if if you are like reaching deep into the bottom of the barrel and like with your kitchen spoons there are so many metaphors in there um let it be to like homegrown tomatoes amen you know yeah tomatoes tomatoes um 
I, uh, yeah, I think that I am just gonna kind of ha hang out here in my, in my self-proclaimed kitchen rut and just like let myself exist a little bit without putting, without applying a, a ton of pressure. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not gonna, we're not gonna apply a ton of pressure. I'm gonna eat like pizza in bed. And honestly, that's a, about all of the spoons that Anaya has right now too, before he totally. wraps up his his current job and, and gets ready to start his new one. But on that note, um, I am so excited about Big Queer Dinner on Sunday. Yeah, we're having a little end of summer celebration. We are having an end of summer celebration and I am so excited to make a thing um, for people that I love and be in community and share a meal. Um, do you want to tell do you want to tell them what we're going to eat what's on the menu um well obviously menu item number one is a marshmallow jello salad oh my god <laughs> wait did what, you commit including to that? pistachio fluff did you, did you commit to absolutely that? not okay. <laughs> just, i am i am not from the midwest <laughs> you're not eating that i'm not eating oh, that oh man uh, but you have to give context part of me wanted to make it as a joke i so our little group chat is like brainstorming what we're going to bring to this dinner and who's going to do what and yada yada. And I am in charge of dessert. And so I ask folks for like yucks and food intolerances that they haven't already told me about. Um, I was asleep when this text uh, circle was happening. Just like, you know, anything you're craving. What sounds good? Is there like a special summer dessert that you might want? And... Anaya responds something to the effect of like, if it doesn't have marshmallows and jello in it, I don't want it. <laughs> and started this like Midwestern monologue about the like importance of a jello salad at a dinner party. And it was, and that's the, that's the story. It's not that exciting beyond that but it was really funny and then the next day when other folks woke up in the group chat they were like wait please tell me this is a joke and you're not gonna make jello marshmallow salad for dessert you know i'm not do you know like ambrosia salad yeah yeah like that's hella nostalgic to me but that's because i lived in minnesota for a long time yeah and I actually craved it when I was pregnant with Maddox okay. and would go to King Supers and get like a tiny deli of it and like eat it and with like absolute shame. <laughs> like, <laughs> like eat it in the car and be like, Maddox, you there in my belly. Don't tell anybody that I'm <laughs> Don't don't tell I'm I'm a foodie. <laughs> don't tell anyone that I'm eating oh. this. Anyways, um, um my other favorite part of that little like group chat. So one of my favorite things about our friend Chris is his just like undying love for a scoop of vanilla ice cream. On oh, anything. I know. What an and, endearing, and what like, an endearing text. We, we sent. <laughs> so for Liam's 30th birthday, we took him to Potage and the dessert that night was like something really phenomenal. And there was like a, a crumble situation and there was, I don't remember totally but I do remember vividly there were two flavors of ice cream listed and Chris had to ask our server if they secretly had vanilla. And <laughs> the server was like, nah, dog, we have the ice cream that's on the menu. <laughs> but do you have any vanilla stash anywhere? <laughs> and then like proceeded to ask for an extra scoop of ice cream after dessert. And so we all just like hung out for an extra half hour so, while, he could so Chris could eat his extra scoop of ice cream. I love that. And I just like really, really admire his commitment to a scoop of ice cream. With his yeah. Dessert. yeah. I was just like, you know what? This is one of the things I love about you. And 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 then like not only to ask, like, do you secretly have no ice cream, <laughs> but to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm doubling down. I'll have another. <laughs> I yeah, love that. Yeah. <laughs> like right. some folks ask for like another whiskey at the end of the night. Chris asks for another scoop of ice cream. God bless. And that's just like I really appreciate that I have people in my life that are like really committed to ice cream. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people. In fact, mm -hmm. um, I were, we're doing a segue, but there I was this morning and I was like, you know what? I'm going to be kind to myself. Should you have ice cream for breakfast? Do wait. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to be kind. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to eat a food this morning. I'm real bad about eating during the day when the kids are not at home. Um, and so I was like, all right, you got to, you got to eat something, take a break, eat something. And I'm like, Oh Yeah. The night that we got pizza rolls, we also got this pint of ice cream. And I was like, it is hot as balls here still. 98 degrees or something like that. And I was like, absolutely, I am going to eat ice cream for breakfast. And then I opened the fridge on accident. It was almost like a, my brain was like, you're not a child. <laughs> so I like opened the fridge and like staring at me is like the large container of like plain full fat yogurt. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> and like made like a yogurt parfait with like the granola that I have and like some berries. Wait, so them. you didn't eat the ice cream? I didn't eat the fucking ice cream. Ugh. I know. Well, I know. Anyways, back you to your dinner. Lunch. Uh, exactly. <laughs> that's my, that's literally my thinking. Um, let it warm up a bit more. You know, 85 wasn't warm enough. I really want it to be 97 when I enjoy it. Anyways, back to queer dinner. Yeah, so we're, um, this is your idea, but you suggested a crab boil to I celebrate did. the end of summer. And I feel like, uh, what, what an, I, I want to be in Maine on, on the coast in a little beach house. We know that all I ever want is to be on the coast. So ever. ever. And I just, you know, we're we're bringing we're bringing coastal vibes here to to Denver. And I Can we thought, all dress like coastal grandmas? Oh my god. Can that be the theme? Ooh. Okay. All right, we're doing a segue, but write write that jot that down. Um a crab oil and I actually was listening to, um, I, I referenced this podcast um, here before, but processing um, with Zara Tangor and her mom, Bobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were talking about like, you know, what's, what is summer, you know, like what is a summer meal to you and crab, potatoes, corn, peaches. It's like the that's the that's it that's it that's it and I was like oh my god you're right um back to our text thread you don't buy crab as much but like you you grew up on the coast I grew so I, feel like, I grew up on the coast and so, so like, I never bought crab right but like I've like procuring crab is like not... you know that you can like find crab in the grocery but not all of our friends knew that <laughs> well and like to be fair, we live in Colorado. But that's my point. It's like, you're like, not, like, where, and especially if it's not, crab number one is uh, not accessible. So, like, no. let's, let's no. just, it's fucking expensive. Yeah. What's nice is that, like, it was a holiday weekend, and so there are places where it is on sale right now. Mm -hmm. um, also, we're buying, like, crab legs. Like, we're not buying Dungeness crabs that we are, like, cooking live. I mean, we are reheating cooked crab legs Essentially, let's yeah. just be honest with each other um and so we're uh i i loved that text thread of like i love this idea and also where where does one find who's, a crab who's crab <laughs> where where are the crabs where do they live <laughs> so uh you I'm, have to go to the special crab store is there is there a specific crab store here in denver that i don't know about anyways everybody knows where to obtain their their crab now and um I'm gonna do because I have to be extra we talked about this I was like are we gonna just be like so simple old bay in the pot you know like third up some corn cobs and whack potatoes all in the same pot or or can we like grill corn and can I do a potato salad anything to to be fussy to make more work for yourself yeah well my theory is, is it'll be worth it. Anyways, did you decide what you're going to make for dessert? No, I'm still working because I wanted to make banana pudding, but you informed me that one of our pals doesn't fuck with bananas. No bananas, no olives. That's no banana. Shit. Well, I won't put olives in the no. dessert. But for some reason, like, I just know that those are the two things that she doesn't like. No bananas, no um, olives. Part of me, so we also, you assigned dessert to me and Liam, and so we've been 
trying to decide if we're going to do two different desserts or do something that 